So here's a pretty tatty looking wing that I found uh, down on the beach. And uh, it's, the reason why it's pretty good is we've still got some feathers on the end. And even though this wrist joint here is, is pretty much fused now, um, it's, it's stiffened up after the bird has dried out. So I'm not going to be able to do anything with this, but I'm going to be able to use it as a, an indicator of the orientation of the wing, which is going to be pretty useful. So we've got the, uh, um, we've actually got part of the shoulder girdle here. Um, we've got the humerus, so the upper arm. We've got the forearm, which is made up with the, the radius and the ulna at the back. And uh, again, you can see on this some little grooves on the back here. So this is where all of the secondary feathers come from. And if I was able to open up the wing, this is the wrist up on this corner here, so the elbow and then the, the wrist. If I was able to stretch this out, you'd see that all of the primary feathers come along this joint here. Uh, so this is the hand. This is like some of the fused bones that make up a bird hand. And you've actually got a little bit of evidence here of the thumb, um, which would be the alula. So that's uh, the, where the feathers come from to control slow and controlled flight. So in this case, um, we're going to be taking a look at the elbow in particular. And the good thing is um, it does come apart. So we can see the, the bones, the makeup of the bones. And we can see how it compares with the, a human elbow. Um, we've got the, this, the two ends of the radius and the ulna actually are they're slightly different from a human. They're both cupped in um, a bit like a goblet style. So they both dock with the, the two ball ends here. Um, we've got quite an extended one here. So the, you were, we're expecting the radius to slide along this joint and we're expecting the ulna to rotate around this part here. So looking at the other end, so this bit here on the ulna is a bit of a, a, a sharp kind of shape and that's going to fit into the groove between the two balls and that's going to control the motion of the the forearm and actually it's going to control how the the forearm twists so when the wings extended with the two balls docked in place you can see that if the wrist was to extend we were going to have a fairly flat wing so keeping the, the two balls in place we're going to rotate inwards and what you're going to get is you've got a twisting motion going on. As the radius travels along that top groove, it's, it's actually allowing the wrist or allowing the elbow and the forearm to bend. And that's really crucial for a folding wing. So as the two come together, the membrane of the, the propatasium is going to be across here. So it's going to form this top plane. But the plane of the, the flight feathers, so the uh, primaries and the secondaries, is going to rotate downwards. So again, there's a groove just in here that is going to track along this. Uh, sorry, there's a prominence here that's going to track along this groove. And as it comes round, the plane of the forearm twists down. 